shiggy, shiggy, shiggy. Let me, let me start that over. <laughs> I a, think we're recording. Are we recording? All right, we're recording. <laughs> All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Mark here with Coffee and Capitalism. I'm your host on this podcast today. I'm here with my good friend, Nick Agneto. He's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He's a husband, a father. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship and identity. And like it's, uh, it's a good topic to get into. And I don't think I've heard too many people actually cover this. So, uh, Nick, how you doing, buddy? Good. Good to see you, Mark, man. And, and I think that we should probably warn them prepare them for what could happen when we're together. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We've, we've known each other for the last good Lord. 24 years, 24, 25 years, years. 25 years. Uh, I met Nick. I was a, just a young buck teenager and he was a raving lunatic. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I was, no, he was a clubber. He was a rave guy. He was into just uh, crazy lifestyle. And he has such a testimony that maybe we can get into it in a whole nother video, which would actually be pretty cool uh, just to share about where he was and where he came from and who he is now. But, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship and business and identity and how not to mix the two and how you don't become what you do or, or who you are is not because of what you do. And, and there's a fine line. We're going to chat about that real quick. But Nick, why don't you just give us just a 30 second synopsis about who you are, where you came from and what you're doing right now in, in the world. Where I came from, hmm, uh, grew up in a big Italian family and uh, we won't get into the testimony side of things, but uh, lived with uh, a, a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah, that'll be part two. So i uh, always been around business, uh, always been around entrepreneurs. Uh, my family came from Italy, like I said, and uh, Masons started construction companies, uh, people that love to cook started restaurants, food businesses, um, you know, and then I was working by the age of 11 at a paint center and uh, stayed at that paint center until I was 18 or 19 years old and uh, multiple businesses along the way that were not necessarily the best businesses. Uh, but then after the part two, the testimony, you'll hear more about, you know, that, but where I headed from there was uh, into more life-changing uh, businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weren't you a promoter at one point? You had a little promotion company going promoter on. Promoter and, uh, you know, uh, so walking hand in hand with New York City. Yeah. Uh, but that that's part of the... That's the, the BC days. That's yeah, the that's, BC days before Christ right. and after Christ. So we'll do a part two of this video for sure. And There's what are you, no doubt about what are you into now? What are you doing now? Uh, what's kind of your, what's your goal for this season of your life? So I think Mark mentioned that I'm a realtor, uh, building a, uh, built with a team, building with a team and building a big business uh, in real estate in the Northeast and in, in Connecticut. Um, which means, which, is, which means big money because right, yeah, the houses like the, up the, there the are average, the yeah. average home where I live is a million to two million average, like average, average. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I lived in Connecticut, we bought, it was, I mean, it would probably be considered like a fixer upper. Our first house was 500 and something thousand. And it was considered how many bedrooms? It was like a four, it was like three, three to four bedroom, but it was a, it was a duplex two family. Uh, but it was considered on the lower end of, you know, it wasn't in like a junky area, but it wasn't like the houses that, all right, you're ready to move in and like beautiful home would be. No, you needed to do a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. You need to do a lot of work. So you're, you're a real estate, real, uh, realtor with a, uh, a large company, a large brokerage. Actually with a tech company, tech company. Uh, the, the founders of this company are not realtors. They don't do real estate. They just do tech. Yeah. And they decided that they wanted to create a real estate company that would, that would funnel technology and um, tools to the agents to build their businesses. Interesting. Two, two huge businesses kind of coming together and overlapping. Yeah. The That's marketing cool. tools, the, the support and everything that they give. Yeah. You could tell. The, so one of them actually created a company, sold it to Google. Like, you know, oh yeah, 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so you're showing homes regularly. You're doing open houses. You're meeting with the team. You're strategizing. I mean, what does a typical day in the life of a realtor look like from, you know, from follow the up, you wake up to the moment? Yeah. So, so basically as soon as I'm, well, <laughs> and I think about this constantly, right. Thinking about who I'm following up with, what do I'm, what am I showing? Where am I going? Is there broker open houses today? Are there open, am I showing open houses today? Do I have some tours? I need to bring some people. Uh, depending on the, the you know, who's in my funnel right. is, is what my day is kind of unfolding, right? That's how my day unfolds. Am I looking for the uh, guy that wants to buy some investment houses for only $150,000 and then throw $200,000 into it? Am I looking at these multi-million dollar houses uh, which is far and few between, right? Those are the 14, 15, yeah. $16 million homes. Oof. Those are big, big boys, big boys, big boys, but they still get action. Just not as much action as the lower it's different action. Yeah. Yeah. And different I'll tell community. you, yeah, but don't sleep on the low end. Don't, don't sleep on it. Cause that's bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. And you're networking, you're meeting with people, uh, you're, you're cross, like cross. How do There's not it? a, there's not a person that can walk by me yeah. that doesn't get my card, a contact, a text message, a handshake. <laughs> Love it. Love it. You're a true networker. Yeah. You've always been a networker. Every, I remember growing up with you, every party, every event, every church uh, group we've ever been a part of, you're always the person that by the end of it, everybody knows. <laughs> work the work the room, bro. Work the room, even but not even with any like intent. You just that's just who you are. You're just a networker. You just uh, uh, you just love talking and communicating with people. And that's actually one thing that's always inspired me. And I've always looked up to you because of that. And and I strive to be uh, a little more and more like that every single day. Just getting out there, meeting people, sharing you know who I am with them, and. Um, you know, I'm in a, I'm doing a couple different things. Uh, I'm on an entrepreneurial journey. I just got my life insurance license. Yeah. So I'm dealing with life insurance and annuities. And part of building our business and our agency is same thing, constantly yes. getting out there and networking and talking to people and shaking hands and getting numbers. And it's a know, gift it's, of gab. It's a gift of gab. Yeah. So we'll have to do. But some it's also the heart, right? The heart behind it. You know, I was having a conversation with a, with a buyer that I have. Uh, actually, this is a really cool story. So I've known this guy for six years and long story short, I just found out that his father is the oldest living Batman cartoonist. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty wild. So we were talking about him buying a house and, and uh, you know, it's funny, like people, even though you know them and you, you're doing work for them and you're sending messages, texts, emails, you're sending cards with all these different, you know, different homes, they don't get back to you. Yeah. And you know, it's not, you gotta be front of mind. You have to be front of mind, yeah. right? And so I'm always in contact with these people. So he says to me yesterday, um, hey, I, I kind of dodged a couple of your texts. And I said, listen, I said, I could care less right. if you buy a house from me tomorrow or 10 years from now. I said, we were friends before this, we're friends after this. I said, I'm here for you, bro. I'm here to serve you. Cause that's my heart. That's my heart. Yeah. At least he was open and honest about it. <laughs> I have people that I've been in connection with for 10 years and I'll reach out and shoot them a message. Just to let them know what's going on in my life. And I'll be left on red all the time. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, I think the, the difference is you just, you don't get offended by it. You just know, Hey, they're just in a different. Uh, he different literally said I dodged your text. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think we all go through that. I think uh, in general, if you own a business or you're running a small business or you're an entrepreneur, you're going to go through that in life. And so, all right. So you network, you're, you're cross, uh, promoting, um, and meeting broke, different, a big part of it is going to broker, open houses, things like that. Broken, open, open houses, Bro doing broker, open houses, broker, yeah. mm -hmm. broken, bro broken, open houses, broken broker, houses, bro <laughs> broken houses. Yeah. Broker open houses. And, um, you got to know your inventory. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, so like as you start at what, what time do you start? What time do you end at night? So that's funny. So I, I just sure recently changes back and forth. Uh, well, right? I recently posted something and I said, you need to work a half a day. Everybody I has to work. A half. 
right? I saw that that was actually a really good, that was a good nugget. And I commented and I said, you need to do, you need to do more of that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, can yeah. You explain a little bit about that. Real so quick. right now I'm doing 20 tips to success. Love it. I'm doing a, a video a day. Um, so the first day was work a half a day and you know, people kind of go work a half a day, right. like get out by 12. No, half a day is 12 hours. Right. Right. So waking up, you work, you start your work. That's it. No matter what that is, whether that's me checking my posts, my social, my, my referrals, you know, and then rolling into the rest of the day yeah. and finishing, you know, by six, seven, eight, right. depending on what time I start. Right. Okay. And I try to get the social media in there in the morning or in the afternoon, not all day. Yeah. Because you know, you get yeah, lost yeah. in there. And there's a fine, there's, I think there's a fine line you need to draw. And especially, you know, in regards to our topic today on this, this, this episode on entrepreneurship and identity, how do you, we'll jump right into this. I think we have four, we have five points we want to really cover. That's right. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. How do you, how do you separate who you are from what you do? How, do? how do you separate the two? Because, you know, a lot of times entrepreneurs, business owners, people that have startup companies, their identity gets meshed with what they're doing. And for some reason, they lose what they're doing. They lose their identity. And, and mm. we've seen that in sports and athletics. We've seen that on Wall Street. We've seen that in Fortune 500 companies. If a CEO loses their position or gets laid off, they don't feel like they have any self-worth at that point. And there's even been some really, really bad things that have happened to people because they lost that identity or so this, a football I don't know player is, loses his leg. He doesn't, you know, he, he, he just gives up on life because that was his identity. How do you define the two? So this is, this is, this may be kind of what you're asking or um, the way that I process things is a little different, <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't talk about what I do. I literally build relationships because that's who I am. So like you said, from the beginning, what I've always talked about or me walking into a room, you know, I think one of the things that I I've said to you in the past is you walk into a place, you own it. Right. Right. And I think that that's how I don't get mixed up in the who I am and in the, what I do is because I really do a person will have a conversation with me and I just met them and we'll have a conversation for a half an hour to an hour and they have no idea what I do. Right. They just know it's who a, you are. And, and I think that I do that for a reason um, because I'm looking for, I'm, I'm looking for in the conversation where I can serve them the best way. Yeah. Because once you build the relationship, like the, who you are, and there's trust in invested in that. Yeah. Then you are, you're in that place where you can serve that person. And there, there's no like guard up. There's no wall up. There's no, this guy's got something out, you know, there's no, it's genuine. Yeah. And they don't Does care what you do at that point because they know no. who you are. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You could yeah. sell widgets. <laughs> right. Right. They'll buy a widget. Yeah. Because they like you. Because and they, they like know that you're a good person and they know that you have a good heart and they know that, you know, if I started to talk about I'm invested in rescuing kids from trafficking, if I started to talk about I have three daughters or or whatever, my relationship with my wife and my children and how we do this and, you know, yeah. then they start to you, you kind of get knit with them. Right. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? How, how do you separate Nick, the realtor from Nick, the father or the dad or the husband? Mm. How do you separate the two? That'd be a question for my wife. No. <laughs> well, because um, you're 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 fairly new to this world of real estate and and going down that that you know that avenue, but you probably have to work longer hours and work a little harder and hustle a little more. How do you separate the two? When you get home, are you still? I don't take the, it home. No. Are you still wearing the realtor hat and no. doing business at all hours of the night? Is there no. an integration that happens, or is there a separation? It's like a light switch. Got it. And for me, I guess for a man, and I'm not sure if this is the right way to say it, but for for you and I, I think it's easier for us to have that light switch and turn it on and off. 
course. Where, whereas, you know, maybe, you know, for my wife or, or for your wife, maybe it takes a little bit more time where they need to kind of unwind or undo. I'm not sure. But when I, when I have my, you know, when I walk through the door, I just click or just, just hang your hat up. Or, well, you know, cause real estate, listen, you know, real estate, it's your business. Yeah. That's it. Like your business is your business, what right. you're doing. And we can essentially work from wherever we are. So when I put that hat on and I'm home, the door's locked. Right. I, yeah. They don't, you know, my children and them, they, they don't come into the room. Yeah. Unless I invite them into the room. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So basically that's like inviting them into that space where it could be very like very business. And I don't want them to feel like I'm not paying attention to them. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, I got some, let's, let's try to change directions real quick. I got some simple strategies that will help the average business owner, entrepreneur, startup, um, you know, startup, man or woman that has a startup business. And I want to hear your thoughts about this. Now, the first one would be to invest, at, to invest into at least one relationship, a friend outside of work, outside of home that appreciates you for you rather mm. than for who you are or for what you do. Do you mm -hmm. have a friend, somebody on the outside that doesn't look at Nick, the realtor, but you just kind of, they're, they're your lightning rod where you can kind of just let do go. I, do I, do I exclude you? You exclude me in this one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have, I have a few. And would you uh, recommend I, that? Is that something that you would, I have a couple with? of friends that are, so I, I hold friendship dear. Yeah. And I have a lot of acquaintances, right. But I have a couple of friends that I keep close and we are connected and we connect and we connect. I could pretty much say we connect almost every day. That's good. Um, you know, just cause you know, we live town to town. One, one lives in the same town. One lives in the town next to me. Um, you know, and we do the same things, right? We, we have the same interests and, uh, one of them has been friends with me since we were like beginning of high school. And, uh, he, he was also, you know, my best man. I'll have to get him on the, on this, uh, this podcast. Yes, you do. Well. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, uh, he's crushing it in Orlando this week. Yeah. 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 That's he's, awesome. Uh, yeah. He's get, he's got some good stuff going on. Um, even, buddy, even buddy. through this COVID, uh, whatever this is. Yeah. Uh, but then I have another buddy of mine who he works crazy, ridiculous hours that are not like mine. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned, you know, he's in like news. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's up at 2 AM in the morning and then, right. you know, he's going to sleep by six thirty, seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. So for us to connect, but we make, we make it a point to connect because we gotta, we gotta, as men, it's like brothers, right? Like yeah. a brotherhood. Right. And we need to make sure that we hash out things and talk about things and pray about things. And you connect or, probably at places other than work or work related environment, which actually yeah. brings me to my second point yeah. is strategy. Number two, establish a work free environment and respect those boundaries. So when you're hanging out with this particular individual, it's off location, it's doing yeah. something out of the ordinary. That's right. Aside from work or business yeah. Yeah. or, or entrepreneurship. Right. Yep. And do you think I, that's I, important? I, I, well, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, so for, for, for as much as we talk about, you know, in a day, talk about what business, you know, what Chris, what, what my wife is doing, what she's building, what I'm building, what we're building. We don't broach those subjects. Right. Right. Because you gotta have a mental break. It's almost like a silence, like a silence and solitude um, to refresh. And, you know, with the, with the, with COVID and the pandemic and the remote working that everybody's doing, I'm sure it's really hard to sometimes have those boundaries, especially if you bring in work home and you got kids homeschooling and you, everything's kind of just a Michigan rule, you know, <laughs> Michigan rule. <laughs> how do you separate? How do you separate? All right. Work, school off, you know, just family time. Like it, it's, it must be tough for some people to divide, to divide that time up or to have those set boundaries. That's a good question, right? So I think something that I think about is, is this something that could be learned? Yeah. Is this something that's like bred in you? Is this something you're willing to put effort into learning? Right. 
Are you, are you willing to uh, put yourself around people or sit down and watch something like this that's going to benefit you so that you get to that next level or, or, or are you just better off, you know, working and just staying an employee? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't promote the employee lifestyle and mindset. Right. But I know that some people have to be employed. Right. But then there's the people that want to be entrepreneurs that are feeling that entrepreneurial pull. They, they have, they have started a company or they're starting a second, third, fourth company. And maybe they are needing a refresher or, or what, you know, how to surround yourself with the right people. And I, you know, you and I know, you know, like the people that you hang out with, the books that you read, the things that you do, it makes or breaks a person. Absolutely. And so I think that, you know, um, but you do need that time where you are quiet, where you're, where you're, I, I almost want to say prayerful. Yeah. And you need those relationships that are in that vulnerable place. You need, you need vulnerable friendships. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, and then that's actually brings me to my third point is scheduling regular time for activities that you enjoy Mm -hmm. and that fill your cup up, such as exercising hobbies, relationship, going to the gun range, exercising. Now that's, Exercising is one. No, I'm that kidding. That's not, not one of mine. <laughs> I well, listen. That's been heavily on my mind and heart lately. And as much menial exercise that I do, maybe walking or 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 you know walking right. around the neighborhood. I think, in me personally, I think I need to start to do something a little more. I agree with. I you. I need to get to the gym three, four times a week if I can. And that's oh. just that's like an internal thing that I'm going through because I see all these great minds and these entrepreneurs and these high net worth earners. Gym is part of their routine every that's single right. day. Yeah. And I think that's that's something in my life that I have to definitely. Yeah, I'm missing it for on. sure. Yeah, there, that that I'm missing. I uh, and it's not we're not talking pumping iron. We're talking. No, just go to the gym and jog and yeah. do some do some things that are going to stretch you. Do some routine, you. do yeah. some routines, do some bar. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think topic number three, the strategies is having that extra extra cut that extracurricular activity like yes. the gym having hobbies yeah. gun range things that you can kind of just let loose i th- i think those are super important to to an entrepreneur business owner to somebody in their own business startup it is it, yeah. it really is you need to yeah go go take a, a hike just yeah get out you got get, I, we, and get out of your own mind get out I'll, of your I'll own tell mind. you i'll tell you one of the one of the blessings that we had while we uh this start of covid um we got to escape the area yeah. and we hiked. We did river walks and hike. We hiked so much. You guys escaped up into the back mountains for a couple, yes. a couple yeah, months, we were gone, right? man, for like four <laughs> months. We, we left and we, Love we it. went to a house up in upstate New York Love it. and we hid out and literally uh, walked off the back deck and shot into the woods. Like, <laughs> Love it. It was good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then the last one, Nick, uh, embracing the power of no, how to use the word no and how to say no to business opportunities um, and things that come into your life that could distract you or consume more of your time. I think by saying no, it gives you a chance to exercise your God-given power over that circumstance rather than letting those circumstances Certainly does you. How, yeah. how important is saying no? And have you seen in your life where there have been times where you've had to put the hammer down and say no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, if you if <laughs> well, we know what a yes man is, right? Yeah. yeah. And yes men get walked over. Yeah. By everybody, right. right? So you have to absolutely learn to use that word no, and that's so foreign to people because people think that people think that saying no is like this. So negative bad. thing. And right. it's, it's not, no, it's is a good thing. Like, can you imagine now you, you're, you're, you're well into a few businesses, you have some income streams coming in from right and left mm-hmm. and, and you've got people that are starting to recognize how successful you are and they want a piece of you and they want you to help them there and start this up and do this and look at this new idea and build this, uh, you know, <clears throat> yeah, I had an opportunity to move my family, uh, it was a great business opportunity. Um, and 
I knew that there was something just not right about it. Yeah. There was just, it just didn't feel right. And I needed to say no. Right. And lo and behold, everybody in this opportunity got burned mm. within months. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, if you don't know how to say no, you better learn to say no yeah. because it will make or break certain moments. And uh, you, you want to make sure that you get catapulted into success and not failure. And no is no doesn't mean failure. Yeah. No means no. Right. No is a form of control where you're controlling yeah. who you are. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Good conversation. Conversation that I think everybody kind of needs to talk about. You know, just just not letting what you do define you. You know, if you're a faith filled person, if you go to church, if you spend any time in the word of God and reading, you know that there's a lot of talk about you being a son of God. And it doesn't talk about you being a this and being a doing this and doing that, but more, you know, like who does who did God create you to be? Nick, if I were to ask you one question and we'll end it on this note, if I were to say, Nick. Who are you? Mm. What would you tell me? What would mm. your first response be? A lot of people would say, oh, when you go to a party and someone says, hey, what do you do? That's the first question on everybody's mind. Not who you are. You never hear, hey, Nick, who are you? You, who you, are you? hear, you hear, hey, Nick, what do you do? So I'm going to change it up. Nick, who are you? Not what do you do? Who are you? What would you tell That's me? That's good. That, before I answer, who am I? It's interesting that you say, who are you? What Not what do you do? Because... Kristen and I, that's my wife, by the way, Kristen, we ask our girls, what, how do you want to live? Not what do you want to do? That's right. A, that's a good question. Not what do you do or what do you, what do you want to do? Yeah. But we ask them, how do you want to live? Do you, you know, for my daughter, who's growing up, she's the oldest, um, riding horses and working with horses is her thing. And She's actually working like eight hours a day at a stable. Wow. And amazing. But what, why? So if somebody asks me who I am, who are, who are you, Nick? I'm a husband. I'm a father. And I think that that goes far beyond the blood relationship that I have with my wife and my daughters. Right. Yeah. It's not just about the family unit. I want to be a father to other people. Look, bro, That's what did funny. I say to you? That's good. When I was cracked out of my mind at 22 years old and I met you, what did I say to you? You said, I, I got your back. I'm here for you. Whatever you need, I got you. That's it. And I was like, who the what? heck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> but it was the truth. And, and ever since then, you've always had my back through the ups, the downs, the, the goods, the bads, everything. And I appreciate, I appreciate that about you, man. And uh, that's awesome. I really appreciate you jumping on this, uh, this, this video, this podcast with me. Thanks brother. Chatting about entrepreneurship and identity. So guys, if you found any value in this video, three things I'd ask you to do, go ahead and subscribe, click the little bell. So you never miss a video. And drop a comment down below. Let's get a little dialogue going. Let's hear some of the things, some of the takeaways that you got from this video. And uh, remember, live well, laugh a little louder, and learn to be a better you. We'll see you guys in the next episode. See you later, Nick. Thank you. Bye-bye, brother.